Now the best investment in the world is the investment in your mind. So hello everybody, welcome to our Bursa Malaysia webinar. In this session, we're going to talk about introduction to exchange traded bonds and sukul. Okay, my name is Shen Chu, and uh, with me, I have the renowned speaker and author with me, which is Ian Tai. Thank you for so much for joining us today. Hey, thank you. All right. So uh, now some of you here may not have invested in bonds before. I think most of us when we buy bonds, right? Usually we buy through, uh, we buy through the unit trust kind of bonds. All right. Am I right? Like we buy bonds funds. You know, I have hardly met uh, people who really go to subscribe the bonds because I've heard that that require you to have a uh, three millions kind of like a network. Am I right? Uh, yes, of course. Yeah. So uh, like for, for small investors like us, we may not be able to, <laughs> to buy bonds yet. But today we're going to talk about how as retail investor like you and I can participate in the bonds in the Bursa Malaysia market. Now, maybe you don't know that you can buy bonds from Bursa Malaysia market, but today we're going to introduce to you how you can buy bonds on the Bursa Malaysia market through this instrument called Exchange Traded Bonds and Sukut, ETBS. So today our speaker Ian Tai will share with you exactly how. Now, uh, this is a special webinar because usually, you know, we do Bursa stock webinar is during a uh, uh, Tuesday, but uh, today we have a special request to do the uh, bond webinar, so we organize it on a Thursday instead because we don't have any other date. <laughs> Alright, so disclaimer, whatever we share in this webinar is only for educational purpose, so in no way that we recommend any buy or sell uh, to any uh, asset class as well, as well, okay? So if you decide to buy or sell anything, you do it at your own risk. So as usual, we have designed a series of uh, webinar for you, organized by Bursa, and uh, now we are coming to the last month already. Next month, we have uh, Pauline Young talk about how to invest rationally in an irrational market. Mm -hmm. This is the first Tuesday of the month. Then the, the following month, we have uh, uh, Ivers Uni who will talk about, who will conduct a Chinese webinar on the second Tuesday of the month, which is on the news analysis in Chinese. And then uh, lastly, the uh, uh, intermediate webinar has is already over, and uh, we'll of course look forward to more sessions in the future. Okay, that will happen on the third Tuesday of the month. Now, who is Ian Tai? Okay, if you have come to our previous webinar, he was here with us to talk about uh, dividend yield mm -hmm. and to talk about uh, other P /E ratios. So today, he's going to talk about what is ETBS. So he is a content producer. Of for kclaw.com, which is the leading personal financial blog in Malaysia. Yeah. He's also a columnist for the fifth person, Value Invest Asia, and uh, majalalabor.com. Okay, he himself is a dividend investor. So to him, um, cons to him uh, not, not um, to be too aggressive mm -hmm. in the stock market, but to be very conservative, building sustainable income building sustainable wealth and income through dividends is uh, his style of investing in the mm -hmm. stock market. So every year he collects eight to nine months in dividends from personal stock portfolio in every year, averaging around 6% per annum in dividend yield. That is a remarkable uh, return uh, as a dividend investor. So while the capital gain all is come in the form of like bonus. Uh, yes, of course. Yeah. So that is Ian Tai, which is a conservative investor today. He's going to talk about Exchange Trader Bonds. Alright, yes. Alright, so take it over, yeah. Alright, um, once again, thank you so much, uh, yeah. Shane, for no such an enthusiastic uh, introduction. It's always my pleasure to do this session with Bursa Malaysia. And of course, today I will be sharing what I've actually gathered from um, about this particular topic, which is Exchange Traded Bonds and Suku. Mm -hmm. Alright, so it is something which is listed on Bursa Malaysia, but it's actually not so well known. All right. What most people know is that you can actually buy stocks in the a stock exchange like Bursa Malaysia, but not many people know that there is such a thing called exchange traded bonds and sukuk, which is um, a type of bond where you can actually buy and sell it in Bursa Malaysia. So we are going to explore this. We are going to dive into this particular topic in greater detail. Um, so let's get into it. I've actually prepared quite a number of materials for today. All so right. you tell us what is bond first, right? Yeah, that's exactly what we are going to do. Yeah, for part because, one. yeah <laughs> because before you before you go to exchange trade funds, bonds and sukuk, we must know what exactly are bonds. 
Okay, so when, so now we are going to dissect, uh, dissect the four words, exchange traded, bonds and sukuk. So in order to know what is that first, so let's talk about the first thing. Let's talk about the first word, which is bond. So what is a bond? Okay, now here's the definition of a bond. Okay, let's, let me give you an example so that you can actually uh, understand how this bond thing works. All right, so let's take a look at this. Screen. Oh, of course, everyone is looking at the screen. If not, mm, yeah. What else would they be looking at, right? <laughs> All right. So at, yeah. at your face. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here's the example. So we have a company. Okay. Let's say, for example, you are the owner of the company, or you are the CEO of the company, and you want to undertake a project. Mm -hmm. Okay. So a company wants to undertake a project, mm -hmm. and you kind of like short of funds. So let's say you you have actually estimated that the project is going to cost about 100 million ringgit. All right, you have 50 million ringgit in hand, but you somehow you seem to be short of another 50 million ringgit. Mm -hmm. So what do you do? I right? can I can do rights issue. You can do rights issue. To take money from the shareholders. Yes, of course. I can do private placement. You can do private placement to take money from the other investors. You can also go to the bank and borrow money. I can go to the bank and borrow money. Or you can actually issue a bond. Okay, so this is the fourth way. Yes, yeah, so this is the fourth way, which is to issue a bond to raise the shortfall mm -hmm. of the $50 million. Okay, okay. So, so bond is a, is, a, is a debt or is an equity? It's actually a debt. Oh, All so right. bond is a debt. All right, so let's say, for example, I'm going to issue a bond and I'm going to sell the bond, let's say, for example, to Shane. All right, I'm the company CEO. I need to raise money, $50 million. So, and Shane is a very rich investor and I'm going to issue him a bond and he seems to be very interested to get it. All right. So what I'll do is that I'll issue him a contract, which is known as a bond. All right. Inside the contract, it states the principal sum. All right. Let's say, for example, Shane is willing, Shane wants to buy, let's say, $5 million of bond from me. Okay. All right. So if I have 5 million, of course, <laughs> of course he's rich. So um, let's say the principal sum is 5 million. All right. And I'm going to promise him a tenure. Let me say, okay, Shane, you are gonna, you're going to give me 5 million. All right. And this 5 million, I'm going to give you a, a it's like a loan whereby it has its tenure. Let's say the tenure is five years. Okay. And of course, Shane would like to have some form of interest lah, because he's actually lending me the money, ma, right or not? So I'm going to give you a very good interest rate of, let's say 5%. Okay. Mm -hmm. So at the, as, at, as, a, as a result, Shane will give me 5 million. I will give him a bond, which is like a, which is like a loan contract, whereby it states the amount of money he lent me, which is 5 million. All right. And the contract is for five years, whereby the interest rate is 5% per annum. And I'm supposed to pay him the 5% interest, all right, in order to in order to compensate him, to reward him for lending me the five million. Mm -hmm. And after the five year tenure, I'm supposed to return the capital back to Mr. Shane mm -hmm. and thank him for financing the project. All right. So that is actually an example of how bond actually works. Mm -hmm. So it is actually a debt contract. So the bond issuer is essentially borrowing money. Yes. Yeah. And the investor to buy bonds is actually lending the issuer the money. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. So if you treat it that way, that means I am the debtor, mm -hmm. you are the creditor. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm the borrower mm -hmm. and you are the, um, I'm the borrower and you are the lender. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's like a, a name. I think recent case like one NDB, mm -hmm. okay, need money so they uh, issue bond mm -hmm. and then the institutional investor go and buy the bond. That means they essentially lend one NDB mm -hmm. the money to buy into uh, to, to undertake the corporate uh, activities. Mm -hmm. Correct. You may say that. All right. So that is the essentials of of how mm -hmm. a bond actually works. Yeah. It's basically a lending thing. All right. Mm -hmm. now, next. Now there are different types of bonds in the market. All right. So I know that in my um, in my webinar slides, all right, I mentioned that there are four, but here I'm gonna give you five, all right, which is one additional bonus from what is being promised, all right. So here are the five. It's it is as it's actually as followed. So the first one is called the fixed rate bond. Second one is floating rate bonds. The third one is zero coupon bonds. The fourth one is convertible bonds, and the fifth one is perpetual bonds. Okay, so we are gonna dive into them. And we're going to take a look at each and each and every single one of them and see uh, what are their differences. Okay, so this is an introductory class of what is actually a bond.
let's take a look at the first one, which is fixed rate bond. Okay, so just now I have actually mentioned, all right, the example very clearly with uh, with um, with Shane Chu here, whereby he's the lender, he's the rich guy with money, and I'm the company that needs money. All right, so what happened is that uh, let's say for example he is the one who buys the bond. Okay, all right, and I'm the one who issues the bond. So a fixed rate bond is something like this. Assuming that he is actually going to give me $5 million, all right, whereby the principal sum of the bond is 100 ringgit, all right. So let's take the principal sum, 100 ringgit. He give it to me, okay. And I promise him a 5% interest. So promise, all right. Every year I will have to fork out for every $100, 5 ringgit, and I have to pay Mr. Shane, all right. So if you look at the graph below, the chart below, that is how the cash flow looks like for a fixed rate bond, okay? Now, assuming that the loan tenure is not five years, but it's actually three years, so here's how it works. At the start, Shane will actually give me $100, okay? So I will receive $100. After 12 months later, all right, let's say the coupon rate or the interest rate is 5%, therefore I have to give Mr. Shane his first income, which is five ringgit, mm -hmm. all right? 12 months later, year two, I have to give him five ringgit in interest. And at the third year, I still have to give Mr. Shane uh, five ringgit in interest. And on top of that, I have to, re I have to actually uh, repay my loan, repay the debt contract by taking the $100 and give it back to Mr. Shane, all right? So in total, Shane has actually lent, Shane, Shane has actually lent me $100 and he has actually received $5 plus $5 plus $5, which is $15 in interest income, plus his capital back, which is $100. Okay. So if you invested, say, $1 million mm -hmm. in the bond that give 5% yield a year, then essentially every year you will take back $50,000. Yes. Until I've... the maturity, you take back the principal sum. Yes, you will take back. Lah. I will have to give. Lah, all right, because I'm the company and you're the lender. Yeah. Lah, right? So this is actually the fixed rate bond. So why is it called fixed rate? Because the interest rate for, for this bond mm -hmm. is always fixed at, it has already, the contract states that it's 5%, means mm -hmm. uh, whether market goes up, market comes down, 5%. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Right. So let's talk about the risk. Lah. Mm -hmm. You see, a coupon rate of the bond givers in your example mm -hmm. is 5%. Okay. Uh, how risky is this bond as an asset compared to fixed deposit and compared to equities okay that one i will have to explain it uh, after i have go through the five things oh, all right because that is that is actually right at the second okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah right. i prefer that i prefer to answer a lot of things but okay. i think for our audience it's best to know the bonds first all right so that we can have a much more meaningful discussion at the uh, second half of this particular webinar so let's go through this now the second type of bonds is floating rate bonds okay so like just now, for example, um, the interest rate is fixed at 5%. So for the first three years, 5%, 5%, 5%, right? But there's such a thing called floating, floating rate bonds, which is based on, let's say, for example, in this case, the KL Interbank offered rate, all right? So it depends on what is the offer rate plus a fixed percentage. So let's say the fixed percentage, let's give it, um, let's say 4%, okay? Let's say the X percent that you see on the screen is 4%. And then the KL Interbank offer rate is actually, um, let's say it's, give, it's giving out 1%, for instance. Then it will be 1% plus the fixed 4%, which is 5% which is in interest rate. So if that happens in year number one, they have to give Mr. Shane his uh, due interest income of $5. But if let's say the KL, I, let's say the KL Interbank offer rate has dropped, let's say it's nothing, all right, it's 0%. Then of course we are, I have to compensate Mr. Shane four dollars, the plus four percent, which is four dollars. And of course, if let's say the KL I K the, the Clebo or the KL Interbank offer rate has increased to two percent, so it will be two percent plus four percent, which is the X percentage. All right, and I have to give him six dollars. And of course, if let's say the maturity is three years, then uh, at the end of the third year, I have to give back whatever uh, I owe to Mr. Shane which is the $100 in principal sum. So why is it called floating rate? Because the interest rate that I have to compensate Mr. Shane differs 
according to the KL Interbank offer rate. Okay, so let's move on to the third one. Zero coupon bonds. Mm. Okay, so what does it mean? Now, zero coupon bonds is like this. Huh? All right, let's say, for example, the principal sum is $100. Okay, so that is the value of the bond. All right, so zero coupon means to say there's no interest rate. All right, so let's assume Shane has a million dollars. All right, I want money from him because I want to start a project. All right, so I tell Shane, hey Shane, can you borrow me $1 million? Will he just give me 100, will, he, will Mr. Shane be so kind enough to actually give me the $1 million? And three years later, um, he allows me to pay him back at the same rate, which is $1 million. That I believe, I that believe Shane is like a... <laughs> that depends on our friendship. <laughs> I believe Shane is one guy who can, la, but let's assume that he's not. La. <laughs> okay, let's assume that he's not. He's, then Shane may say, okay, la. all right, I'm willing to take a chance on you, but uh, instead but instead of giving you $1 million, right? how about this? I, um, I give you, let's say, 80, I give you 85 lah, uh, 850,000. So you lend me 850,000. I do the project. Then um, after three years later, the three years, right? I don't need to, I don't need to receive money from you. Wow. Okay. Take 850,000. Three years, don't need to see Shane. All right. But I, but at the end of the third year, I have to give back to Shane $1 million. Okay. So this is actually how zero coupon bonds actually work, all right? Um, which is why zero coupon bonds, they are, when, when they are offered, they are always offered at a discount as compared to its principal sum. All right, so that's the third one. Fourth one, convertible bonds. Ah, what is this convertible mean? Hmm. So now let's say Mr. Shane, he said, mm, Ian, actually I take a look at your project and your company. Uh, your project and your company is very interesting. Uh. Do you offer do you offer me a chance to become your buddy, uh, your shareholder? Mm. Okay, so that's where the convertible comes in. Lah, all right. So meaning to say, Mr. Shane, he's so rich, he'll give me $1 million at the start. And let's say, for example, this is a fixed bond. All right, just now, like type number one, we got the fixed uh, rate, fixed rate bond. So I receive $1 million from him. I Every year I have to pay Mr. Shane um, $5, uh, the $50,000 in interest to Mr. Shane. That's his interest income. That's year one, year two, and year three. And after year three, let's say, for example, Mr. Shane says, hmm, Ian, I don't want to invest in your company. Fine law. I take, my, I take the $1 million that uh, I owe Mr. Shane and I give it back to Mr. Shane. But let's say for example, let's say for example, Mr. Shane says, Oi, Ian, I like your company. Can I become your shareholder? Then instead of giving back the $1 million in capital to Shane, I will start to calculate, okay, lah, this is the rate, all right? This is the rate that, uh, uh, this is the amount of shares that uh, that is worth equivalent of $1 million and I will give it to Shane. So instead of receiving back his uh, loan capital, all right, he may actually get shares. He may be compensated with my company shares instead, so that he is now a brand new shareholder of my company. Mm. So that is actually convertible bonds. But of course, can the shares be converted only at the end of the third year? Not necessarily. Which means to say in that three years period, let's say this bond is only for three years. In that three years period, at any point of time, depending on the contract, he can actually slowly, uh, he can slowly convert some of his bond holdings into share holdings. Mm. All right. So that is like a sweetenizer, lah, just to attract you to be, to actually lend, lend me your money. Mm. Okay. So this is like a loan stock. Sort of. Lah. Yeah. Convertible loan stock. Mm. Right, which is also traded on uh, on Bursa Malaysia. Mm, correct. So we have the final one, which is perpetual bonds. Okay. Why is it called perpetual? Because there's no maturity date for it. Mm. That's why if you see the third year onwards, it's like there's slumber lamanya lah. All right. That means to say the bonds is issued. 
is something like this. Shane, okay? He's so happy and uh, he lends me money, $1 million to fund a project. And this project is so long term, okay? So long term that I tell Shane that this project, uh, uh, this project that I do right, is going to change the world. Mm -hmm. But you must give me time. I cannot give you a promise date that okay. I'm going to repay you. Okay. All right. But every every time I didn't re every day or every year I didn't repay you the repay you the money right. You will get your five percent interest rate. Your five percent interest income. All right. So you say okay, law. What sort of project is that? All right. Let's say you find it to be wow, so life so world changing or something like that. Okay, law. Then you give me the one million dollars, and then as long as they didn't repay you the money, I have to give you the five percent forever until I re until I call until I say Shane I got the one million dollars to give back to you then I give back to you but if not the interest income that Shane receive is like forever got such a thing or not God mm -hmm. all right this thing only have this thing usually happens uh if if it's not not necessarily the company usually it is a government maybe the government want to do super long-term project maybe a super long highway or railway or something, some sort of infrastructure that takes like 10, 20, 30 years to build, then maybe they can actually issue perpetual bonds. Mm. Okay. Mm. So the question is this. Just now Shane asked why issue bonds, right? Mm. So many other ways to actually uh, receive or raise financing, money. raise money, raise financing for your project. Why issue bonds? Mm. Good question. Now I'm going to answer that. So first, I'm going to compare bonds with uh, bank borrowings. All right, you say, hey, but this bond thing is like, uh, you know, I borrow money from Shane, all right, and I'm paying him 5% interest. Uh, if let's say the bank offers 4%, wouldn't you, wouldn't it be smarter to actually go and get the bank, uh, get the loan from the bank instead of getting from Shane? Mm -hmm. Actually, it depends. It depends on what is the bond that you are issuing. That's why I would like, that's why I first introduced you to the five different types of bonds, all right, to actually, so that I can explain these benefits better. Okay, now here's a, now here's the thing. Bonds, bank borrowings, okay, just imagine yourself. Bank borrowings is something like, let's say, for example, you going to the bank to get a mortgage from, uh, to buy your house. Okay, that's bank borrowings. Bonds is like just now what we see, the cash flow thing. So what are the benefits between, uh, what are the benefits that is in favor of bonds? So let's let's say for example, if you want to compare a fixed rate bond, remember, one um, we have one hundred ringgit, all right. He give me the one hundred ringgit, I pay him five percent interest, right? So the good thing about this is that, in this three years period in the loan tenure, every year I just pay interest. And then at the end of the contract or the maturity of the bond, I only pay the, I only make the full loan repayment to Shane. But some bank borrowings may not be that way. Imagine like, for example, um, you are getting a mortgage from the bank. First, you get the money to buy your house. Then every now and then, let's say the contract is like 20, 30 years. All right. Uh, you already have to start servicing the mortgage, right? That consists both principal and as well as interest. Mm. All right. So the, the difference between bonds and bank worries could be one just pay interest. The other one, interest plus principal. Mm. All right. So maybe you pay a bit lesser like, if you use the bond way to actually uh, finance your project. Mm. All right. That could be the first one. All right. The second one is that um, if let's say I'm the one who issue zero coupon bonds, mm. Shane, Shane actually lend, uh, he lent me 850,000, like just not that example. I get the money, I go and finance the project, okay? Until the end of the contract, I don't need to fork out a single cent to actually pay Shane. So let's say if the contract is three years, for three years, I can finance my project without needing to worry when without needing to worry about loan repayments to Shane. Mm. But bank borrowings are not that. 
Banks are not so generous, lah, huh? mm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Banks say, hey, I every have... month also need to pay the installment. Every month also have to pay installment. So if you if you have zero coupon bonds, wow, your cash flow very nice because you don't need to actually uh, think about um, debt repayments until the end of the bond contract. That's the second. That's the second thing. The third one is convertible bonds. Even better. Let's say for example. I don't have means to actually, uh, let's say I, I still need the, after I the, the bond contract ended, right? Let's say three years. Shane asked for money, all right? And let's say, for example, I feel that this money, right, could be better used to actually invest in another project, all right? If you have convertible bonds and say, hey, Shane, I'll be investing in this super duper project. Why don't you get my shares instead? Lah? Then I... Then in that case, right, Shane will actually be compensated with shares, and I still got the money to finance my super duper, my next super duper project. But I will only convert if I find value in your company. Yes. Yeah, your share price is. I think your company is undervalued, so it's good for me to convert right now. Yes, yeah. of course. So this is also one way that Warren Buffett likes. Uh -huh. Yeah. To, to invest in the company, I think Warren Buffett likes to lend money to you first. After that, if you see value in the end of the tenure, mm -hmm. he will convert to become a shareholder. Then you no need to return my money. Let me be part of your, <laughs> be your partner in the business. Yes, exactly. So that is why uh, convertible bonds. But at least it allows me, the company, a chance to sell to you la, this super duper project so that you can become a shareholder. You can, mm. you can come in as a partner. Mm. Unlike banks, banks don't. Banks only take shares if let's say they got no choice. Mm. Actually, they prefer money back. Mm. Yep. Perpetual bonds is even better because actually for bank borrowings, you think banks are, uh, when they issue out, let's say, uh, bank loans, uh, they always have loan tenure one. Uh. They always want to know when exactly they are going to come back, when exactly they are going to get back their, their, their capital. But if you issue perpetual bonds, no such issue. Because your when you exactly repay the loan, uh, it's not defined. Mm. All right. So maybe that's why some uh, companies or corporations or governments may opt to actually issue bonds instead of bank borrowings. Mm. Now what about shares? Okay. So here's the thing: a bond is actually uh, a debt. It's like a loan contract between me, the company, the bond issuer, and him, the bond and him, the the bond holder, the lender. Okay, he hasn't owned my company yet. Mm. I still retain my ownership. Mm. But if I do rights issue and private placement like what you have just mentioned, mm. then I have to like cut off some of my shareholdings and give it to people like Shane. Yeah, which is not something that I really want to see. So that's why. I issue bond. Okay. So, so you don't want me to take part in your business, but you only want my money. So you issue bond. <laughs> but I compensate you with interest, lah, you know. Okay. Uh, so that is why we do um we do we issue bonds instead of shares. Then the second thing is that um for me, right, because let's say I have full confidence in my project that it's gonna make me super duper good returns, I don't want to share it with Shane. But since Shane is giving me the money, he's lending me the money, why don't I fix, why don't I actually fix his uh, return on investment? I say, Shane, this is the bond, all right, I issue to you, you give me money, I, I will give it back to you, but every year, I will fix your interest income at 5%, okay? So let's say, for example, the super duper project is going to give me a return on investment of 20% or 25%. And it really, really materialized. All right. Shane's um, interest income will still be 5% fixed. He will not take part in the 20% and 25% because he's not a shareholder. All right. So which means to say his income is kept, whereby my income is dependent on the project. If the project is super good, then my returns will be enhanced. If I issue bond instead of shares. Mm. All right. The third one is holding period. Of course, um, this one I believe that uh, for shares, right? Of course, if let's say I want to issue rights issue to Shane, of course Shane will have a say lah. That's the bad part about 
bonds uh, because Shane can actually hold the short hold the share my company share like forever lah. All right, so that is that is one thing good about uh, share ownership mm. over bonds. All right, so unless it's a for bonds point of view, unless it's a perpetual bond, otherwise the the thing is actually quite fixed uh, The loan tenure is quite fixed. Actually, it can work both ways. All right, it depends on the intention. Number one is that if let's say I'm a company and I want Shane's money forever, then of course I will issue shares. But if let's say I don't want I don't want to hold on to shares, I don't want to hold on to Shane's money like forever. So I just give him a bond lah, so that I can fix. Okay, Shane's, Shane's involvement in my company, right? As a bond holder is only like three years. After three years, I take his money, I give it back to him and I have nothing to do with him already. So that's the beauty of the bond side. Mm. Of course, um, if let's say my company, right? If I give shares to him, what if my company doubles in value? Mm. Then you... Not, that you, you feel emotionally <laughs> not so right. <laughs> yes, also, uh, yeah, lot of course, la, because everyone is greedy <laughs> in that sense. La. But then, of course, the, the only thing is that uh, the difference between bond and shares is this. La. But when I give, when, when I kept Shane's involvement in my company financially and fix his interest income, I have to give him some guarantee la, why he has to, why he, uh, should actually subscribe to my bonds, uh, which is if my company doesn't work out, let's say I go, let's say my company go bankrupt, then of course you will get first mm. priority over mm. over my assets, over shareholders. Preference shares, holder, and so the common shareholder. Yes. Mm. So that is the difference between bonds and shares. Mm. Okay. So 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 when the company uh, need a cash call, I mean they need needs money, so they need to decide whether should they do a rights issue. Should they do a private placement or should they borrow money from the bank or should they issue bonds? Yes. So they will weigh, okay, what would be the best. more effective way or best way in, in this case where they want to undertake a certain project or certain investment? Correct. Mm -hmm. And of course, with that, we are going to look into Sukuk. Ah, yeah. So what is Sukuk? Good idea. Sukuk. All right. Um, I have actually done a little bit of research on it. So let's mm -hmm. take a look at what I have mm -hmm. gathered. All right, because to me as a non-Muslim, uh, to me mm. born and suku, more or less the same lah. Uh, all right, yeah, but yeah, of yeah. course suku is really new to me as well. All right, <laughs> because I think only um, maybe most of the Muslim community may be more interested in suku, uh, but for us non-Muslim, we just say ah, more or less the same. Right? What's the difference? Mm. But actually, it's a world. Is there are some uh, form of differences between the two? All right, so it's good that all of us as Malaysians know yeah. what. Yeah, so it is. That's, why, <laughs> that's why I want to applaud you for coming to this webinar today to learn what exactly are Sukut. <laughs> okay, Sukut is something like this. Huh? Because um, under the under Islamic finance, okay, what I've studied, huh, because I'm not Muslim, so what I've studied, at least from the internet, is this. Um, for the Muslim, for Muslims, right, it is actually not permissible for people like for people like you to earn interest. I'm a Muslim. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't earn interest. Let's say Shane has converted. <laughs> <laughs> now he is a, now he's Muslim. Now he, let's call him Muhammad, Muhammad Shane. Muhammad Shane. Okay. <laughs> Muhammad Shane. So I come say, hey, hey Muhammad Shane, uh, I issue bond to you. La. You earn the interest income. Mm. You see, then Shane say, tak boleh lah, saya sudah, yeah. saya sudah convert jadi uh, Muslim. Uh, All right, how? Are you like that, uh, that but then I still want your money uh, I still want to pay you the the fixed interest but I cannot issue bond to you how huh? that's where Sukuk comes in all right so Sukuk actually the intention is pretty much the same I'm the company I want to raise funds for my project so instead of using bonds because bonds is bond involves riba which is not permissible under the Islamic or the Sharia principle so I use Sukuk all right so I say okay don't worry I got Sukuk financing. They say, Apa itu Sukuk? Okay. So Sukuk is like this. I'm going to tell you a project. Okay. So I tell you, one machine, this is the project. This is the project that I'm doing. Oh, hey, look at the project. Okay. So the Sukuk, all right, I'm going to give you the Sukuk. It's a contract that, that evidence that you will be the owner of this. You will be a part owner of this uh, project or the company's assets or the stuff that I'm undertaking. Okay, so let's say you're interested, you are going to get receive a contract 
and you are actually a part owner of that asset. Mm. Okay. But so now you are the part owner, right? But I'm the one who is managing and running the business, the whole show. Ma. So what you do is that you actually lease it back to me. Mm. Okay. Uh, you lease it back to me. So it's like I'm renting from you. Okay. And when I rent it from you, I have to pay rental income to you. All right. So that is where your periodic profits come in. And it's I profit, huh? Yeah. It's not, it's, it's not a, 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 a rental. It's not a rental. Like it's a profit. It's a, yeah, it's. So profit, if like. the company don't make money, how? Don't make profit, how? I still have to pay you the, I still have to pay the rent. La. You still have to pay the rent, la, yeah. even though the, the, the project did not yield any profit. Yes, because I'm like renting the thing. I'm renting the thing from you, ma. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So let's, so now you're getting, okay, la, I'm the, so now from the, from your point of view, you have a, you own a certificate that evidence the ownership that you are the part owner of that company's asset. You are actually in a way much um, lease it back to me so that I can run the business on behalf of you. Okay. And on a periodic basis, maybe a uh, setiap bulan or setiap suku or something like that, I have to give you a periodic profit, something like your rental income lah, and give it to you because you're the owner. Ma. I'm the, I'm the like, tenant. Ma. Right. And after the maturity of the contract, I will then I will have the right to actually say, okay, I want to buy back the company's asset. You mean back my money? I want to buy back the company's asset and and your the projecting from you. So then you say, okay, look, then uh then you ask where's my money? Then I give you back my then I give you back your money and I re, then I will be returned my ownership of the project or the asset. So, so far, so clear, so far, clear, right? And of course, by the way, uh, for those of you who are more familiar with Sukuk, and if you're Muslim, uh, if there's anything that uh, I may explain wrongly, so apologize for that. Lah. So <laughs> that's at least our, our findings, lah, all right? Mm -hmm. It'll be great to actually learn more about these things, but that's mm -hmm. my understanding thus yeah. far. So, so whether the, the project makes money or not, I, as a Sukuk holder, I will still receive the profit. So, yes. yes. All right. And with that, that is why Sukuk is Sharia compliant, mm. not bonds. Okay. Now, so what's the difference between bonds and Sukuk? So number one is the ownership. Okay. Like bonds, you totally don't own my company's asset or my project. But for Sukuk, you are part owner of that asset. All right. That's the difference. Number one. Number two, you will receive profit sharing from the underlying asset. All right. Whereas for bonds, you earn the interest rate or the, the interest income or the coupon from the bond. Okay. So in a way, how how bonds are valued is depending on my credit my credit rating. Mm. All right. Whereas for suku, the value of the suku is actually based on the company's project or the company's asset. That's the third difference. And of course, the fourth difference is obviously why there's a why there is a difference between bonds and suku is simply because bonds is bounded by let's say the local the locality of the local laws lah, the business laws and stuff like that but suku you must be you must be sharia compliant which means to say let's say for example hey Muhammad Shane I got this project I want to do I want to open infrastructure what kind of infrastructure I want to open casino at some pull out then you cannot do lah, because it's not sharia compliant mm -hmm. You cannot use Sukuk to say, I want to open one gaming center at some pulau. No, it doesn't work. Mm. So the activity that the company wants to undertake has to be Sharia compliant to be able to issue a Sukuk. Exactly. It must be Sharia compliant and it must be permissible under the Islamic principles, right? So how do we calculate the yield of a bond? Good question. Now let's, let's, let's take a look. So just now we, we have studied bonds. We have done Sukuk. Now we are talking about uh, exchange traded. So why there's these two words exchange traded? Because like uh, what Shane just explained, it can be traded on the stock exchange. Yes, it can be traded on the stock exchange. So why does it have to be traded on the stock exchange? Because there are a few ways to actually buy bonds. Number one is from over the counter. Uh -huh. All right, through the banks. Yes, but that one you need a lot of money, lah. All mm -hmm. right, and unfortunately for for us, we 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 really want to make some 
some of that kind of friends are, you know, the ones that have $3 million in the bank, uh -huh. the ones that can afford to actually buy uh -huh. bonds uh -huh. directly from the bank, right? Um, yeah, well, unfortunately, we are PT investors, uh -huh. have smaller capital, so no, lah, we cannot do that. <sighs> then then well, we can go to Fund Supermart <laughs> and buy. <laughs> Fund Supermart is actually the big guy. He buys the bond on behalf of the he buys the bonds, right? So let's say for example, they have a bond, they have the money, so they buy the bond, and when they have the bond, then they sell it to smaller people like us, lah. Mm -hmm. So right. we buy a unit of the bond in a bond fund. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we so are. This is how retail investors usually participate in a bond market. Now yeah. only got lah. Last time it doesn't have. Okay. Now only now I believe they just launch these things. Oh okay. So yes. That's why their tagline is everybody can buy bond. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, but now there's third way, which is exchange traded bonds, where each one of us can participate in bond market on the stock exchange. Yes, directly from Busan yeah, Malaysia. Not a bond, not on a bond exchange, but on the stock exchange. Okay. Yes, <laughs> exactly. So how to calculate yield? So we have two types. The first one is we calculate the current yield. All right. The second one is yield to maturity. Okay. So I'm going to explain this too really quickly. And yeah, let's take a look. Very familiar kind of example. Shane lend me hundred dollars. All right. And the coupon rate is 5%, maturity three years. So in this case, the yield is very simple. It is $5. All right. If you want to calculate his uh, current yield for let's say year one, it'll be five. It'll be like uh, 5% or five ringgit. Uh, divide by the number, divide by the amount of lending he, he actually give it to me, which is hundred dollars. Five divide by one hundred times hundred percent, so it's five percent. So that is your cover. Very rate. straightforward. Very straightforward. So now, if let's say the same bond is to be um, listed on Bursa Malaysia, okay, let's say like scenario one, all right, the same bond, and let's say it's it's actually listed on Bursa Malaysia. So you can actually buy and sell mm. whenever you like. Mm. Because when there's market forces, there will be some bonds that are selling at premium, there will be some bonds that are selling at discount. Mm. So let's say for example, right now, right, uh, let's say another guy, he can come in uh, after you, after the bond is listed on, let's say, Bursa Malaysia, at year one itself, you can buy the bond for 95 ringgit. Okay, that means you say you can actually uh, if let's say it, this is Shane or Shane number two, instead of giving me hundred dollars, he's now giving me ninety five dollars, mm -hmm. and he still received the five dollars yeah. interest. So the yield definitely go up because my principal investment go down. Yes, and this is how you calculate your, uh, your current yield, which is as followed. So you see the table, huh? okay? So this is the cash flow, uh, cash flow table that I prepared for you. So let's say at year one, you paid $95, all right? Okay, year one, obviously you won't get any interest. So you start getting the interest at year number two because it's after 12 months and you get $5. So therefore, if you take five divided by 95 times 100%, therefore your current yield is 5.26%, all right? So that's your current yield. But actually that is not your total return because at the end of the... Uh, at the end of the bond, right, the bond, the contract thing, right, instead of getting back $95, you're going to get back $100. Mm. All right, so that means you say at the end of the maturity, you are going to receive a little bit more. Mm. So it's not $100, you, you lend it to me, $100, I, lend it, I give it back to you. It's $95 to me, I take back $100. You take back $100. So therefore, there is such a thing called yield to maturity, and the formula is as followed which is the amount that you collected back minus of the amount of money that you have landed to me. So it's $5, right? But then you, that $5 is actually um, being earned over a period of two years because you only buy the bond at year number one. Mm. It ends at year number three. So you have to divide it by two, all right? Mm. So therefore you still get 2.5% extra lah mm. from your 5.26% current yield. So therefore, if you take 5.26 plus 2.5, your yield to maturity is 7.76% as shown on the table. Mm. Now, let's look at another scenario. Huh? 
Scenario two, let's say for example, you buy the bond instead of year number one, now you buy it at year number two. So you buy it one year before it expire. So what would your returns be? Your current yield will be, as you can see, the cash outflow starts at year number two, you paid $95. At year number three, you get the $5 in interest income. So your current yield is still the same, which is five divided by 95 times 100%, which is 5.26. But your maturity, you see, because it's one year only, ma. Mm. you pay me 95 at year two, mm. one year later, I give you 100 already. Mm. So, the, which means so you are going to get more or less 5%, all right? 100 minus 95 divided by one. Mm. So, it's 5%. So, therefore, your yield to maturity is 10.26%. Mm. All right? So, that means to say, in year two, your yield to maturity will be much higher than than a person who buys the bond at year one, although it's the, at the same price. Okay. Now let's look at a reverse scenario, which is scenario number three. Let's say you can buy the same bond, huh? all right? But instead of uh, $95, now this time it's reverse. Shane say, Ian, uh, okay lah, like this, I borrow you, I, I lend you 105. I still collect my five, my five uh, percent interest. All right. And uh, at the end of the loan, con the loan contract or the bond tenure, I get hundred hundred dollars back. Mm. So what would you, what would your current yield and your yield to maturity be? So let's take a look. So let's say in year one you pay hundred five. Year two you get five you get the five dollars. All right, so actually, right, you take five divided by 105 times 100 percent, your actual current yield right, is actually 4.67 percent because I invested the bond at the premium price, correct? And at the end of the maturity, you get back 100 dollars. All right, so that means you say you lose about five dollars in, in principle lah, over a period of two years, so therefore, you have to minus off uh 2.5 percent from your current yield. And therefore, your yield to maturity is around 2.26. Ah. Mm. Okay, which is a bit lower than if you buy it at 95. So that is the thing here. When bond prices are low, of course, your yield to maturity and your current yield will be much higher. If you buy it at a higher price, then of course, your yield to maturity and your current yield will be much lower. It is the same for scenario four. If you buy the same bond at 105 at year number two, so what will happen? So if you paid 105 in year two, and you only get your cash inflow at uh, year number three, all right, so as you can see, you get uh, your $5 in interest, your current yield is 4.67, your 4.76 as per usual. Sorry about the typo, uh, it's supposed to be five slash 105. Yeah. Now, when it comes to your maturity at year three, your cash inflow is $100, so that means you say you will lose 5% uh, from there. So therefore your yield to maturity, it's um, 4.76 minus of 5, therefore it is 0.26%. Mm, interesting, yeah. but essentially I essentially in this scenario, right, I buy 105, mm. I take back $5 in interest, mm -hmm. and, then I, and then I take back 100. So essentially I don't lose any money. It's actually you lose on inflation. Yeah, I lose on inflation. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to give you some case study. Uh, all right, so that you can actually be familiarized with the calculation. Okay. So this is actually, um, we're going to do one exchange traded. Now, because what, why, why, why does this use is very important? Why is this use important? Because when you invest in bond, uh, generally, you know, we would not expect so high capital appreciation. It's mainly from the income perspective. Do you agree? Yes. And that's why learning how to calculate the yield is very critical as uh, to be a uh, bond investor. If okay. you look at the uh, America, uh, the, the treasury market, you see that their, their yield is actually going down. In other words, their bond price is going so much higher. People are willing to pay the bond at premium rate to receive so little yield. So that's, that means how maybe how fearful is the market. 
uh, yeah, of course. Yeah, at, at a certain point, they are also inverted yield. Okay, that that took place. So, so that's why when it comes to bond investing, it is important that we learn how to calculate yuan. So, so glad that today we have uh, Ian to share with us how to calculate yuan. We're going to do a case study on one of the issuer, which is Dana Infra National Perhart. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So Dana Infra actually in in Bursa Malaysia there are four. There are four ETSB exchange trade exchange traded bond and sukuk listed on Bursa Malaysia, and three of them are from Dana Infra National Perhart. Okay. So basically, these are the four ETBS, Exchange Traded Bonds and Sukut listed in Malaysia, mm -hmm. on Bursa Malaysia. So mainly all four are Sukut, huh? Yeah, uh, yeah, basically all four are Sukut. All Sharia compliant. All Sharia compliant, mm -hmm. okay. And uh, the first three are, are raised for the same purpose. Lah. Mm -hmm. And the project involved is actually the Klang Valley Mass, Rap Mass Rapid Transit, the, K, the Klang the KVMRT. Mm. Okay, the KV MRT project. That is why they actually uh, have this to cook. So if you buy this, then who knows you are part of the part owner of that MRT project. Uh, not, oh yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, because they they leash back from you. Right? <laughs> yes, exactly. Okay. All right. So the other one is the last one, the Isan Suku. The Isan Suku, I have no idea what that is, uh, la, but anyway, the, the top three is actually from the same project, so that's okay. why I study that. So there are actually four listed exchange traded bonds and super on Bursa Malaysia that every retail investor can participate. Yes. Yeah. So these are the stock code, I remember. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about um, this particular suku, all right? So the purpose of the suku, all right, why they have this suku financing is because they want to fund capital expenditure and operating expenditure of the Klang Valley Mass Rapid Transit project. All right. So this suku uh, was first listed on 8th of February 2013. Maturity date, 8th February 2023, 2023 which means years. it's a 10 years 10 horizon. Yeah. Par value, $100 per lot. Every lot, uh, okay, by the way, minimum subscription is 10 lots. Meaning you say if you want to participate in this, at least your invest, your initial investment capital will be around one thousand plus plus lah, or more or less around there lah. So that is your uh, more or less there lah. Okay. Profit rate they agree to pay you four percent in uh, four percent per annum of the par value. So which means to say every year you're gonna get uh, four percent, all right, or four dollars for every hundred dollars in par value. Payment frequency, semi-annual, which means every six months they will give you two bucks. More or less that, lah, all right? Mm -hmm. Every every six months, two ringgit. Six months later, two ringgit. Mm -hmm. So that means there will be like 20 payments of two ringgit. Lah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And the redemption is 100% of power value at its maturity. It means to say uh, for every lot, they will give you back 100 ringgit. Mm -hmm depending on how many lots you have. Mm -hmm. So these are the key details of the Sukuk. And right now, because it started at 8 February 2013, all right, now to simplify this particular webinar, let's assume that we are now at year number seven. Wawasan dual blow, dual blow. Okay. Okay. So this is the price that we can get into right now, all right, which is $100 and 60 cents. So this is the current price, uh, the last to check. Yes. Or at least when I do so this. It's slightly like, uh, above the par, par value. 60 cents above the 60 par value. 60 cents above the par value. Actually, the price didn't go anywhere. Yeah. So that, that means your 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 annual yield will not be 4%, but maybe 3.9 something percent. Correct. Okay. And therefore, what is your returns, right? So this is where we calculate your yield. So let's assume that in 2020, you, you paid 100 Bring it and 60 cents for per lot of this bond or this ETBS. Your cash inflow is still four dollars. So therefore, if you take four divide by 100.6 times 100 percent, your returns will be your current yield will be 3.98 percent. Yeah. Okay. And this bond or sorry, this suku will will mature in 2023. So by 2023, you will you'll be redeemed. You can collect back $100 from from, uh, from Dana Infra. So meaning to say, uh, you paid 100 and 
160 cents, you collect back 100, 100 uh, ringgit per lot. So you will lose that 60 cents lah, essentially. Mm -hmm. So that 60 cents, if you divide it by three, then of course you're gonna, uh, of course you will lose like 0.2%. So therefore, if you take 3.98, your current yield minus off the yield to maturity, which is 0 0.2, your yield to maturity is 3.78% or 3.8% like that. Okay, so it's a little bit better than your FD, lah, so to speak. Okay, so with that, I have ended my session. Oh, and, okay. Uh, yeah, uh, actually, what time is it now? <laughs> yeah, I still have time, more time for question and answer. But, but let's talk about uh, bond versus fixed deposit. Okay. Okay, now, am I, am I right to point out that bond is slightly, bond and super are slightly more risky than fixed deposit because that involves a debt lending? Uh, in a way, yes. Yeah. Okay, number one, because fixed deposit in Malaysia, if let's say you, you didn't put like more than two hundred fifty thousand dollars, then of course it's BIDM insured. Mm, okay. <laughs> right. that, but bond have a slightly higher risk that the, the company may not be able to pay you back the the, the principal sum, uh, Yes. Right? But of course, with higher risk instrument, it comes with a higher return because if you look at our fixed deposit, maybe three over percent. But in this case, uh, the Dana and Fry is able to offer you four percent yield a year, uh, uh -huh. uh, if you are willing to take slightly more risk. <laughs> yeah, that's the only thing. Lah. Yeah, so it all depends on us, lah, whether our risk appetite, okay? How are we going to diversify our portfolio? So if you already have a lot of equities in the portfolio, and maybe it's time for you to move some into the debt capital market, which is the bond, mm -hmm. or maybe get some, keep some in the FD. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now let's just do some question. Okay. okay, let's do some Q&A. So the first question, does so you have any question, please uh, write in the question box so uh, Ian will be able to see and answer them. Okay, mm -hmm. so number one, if what if zero for zero uh, coupon bonds, mm -hmm. if the company goes bankrupt, mm -hmm. what happened to the bond? Mm, good question. All right. So when a company goes bust, right? All right. The company will have, let's say, they have to lay on some assets. Uh. They have to auction some assets. Go through the liquidation process. They have to go through the liquidation process okay. and let's see what they can recover from it. So let's say, for example, for for the company, right? Let's say they recover certain portion of assets. Then of course, compared to its shareholders, bondholders will get the first cut, lah. That means say at least they will, the bondholders will actually get paid from whatever is being liquid, liquefied okay. first over the over rest of shares. Uh, yeah. What happened to other uh, uh, like, like borrowings from the bank? Will the bankers have the have the first say before the bond? That one you have to look at who who you have to actually have a list of priorities. Like who is actually who is actually in the top priority. So that one you have to even banks also it depends on what the what what is the loan structure of the bank? Some can be secured loan, some can be unsecured loan. Then, then mm -hmm. here we go la, Then there's more ranking la, to be ascertained before they make the payment to the respective stakeholders. Mm -hmm. So the next question is: What is the major risk in exchange traded a bond and Sukut, and how do we mitigate the credit or business risk if the company can't perform the projects in Sukut? Hmm. Good question. All right. Basically, if you want to invest, first of all, you must actually have a sense of belief that the project can work. Then, of course, you will lend the money. So it is very important for you to know what is the purpose of the company or the government. Why do they want to come up with this this super financing or bond financing before uh, to to act, and then they will market this to the people. So if you are an interested party, that means you want to buy and participate so make sure you first know the project okay second thing is that after you have purchased after you have purchased this thing right there's no sort of a, uh how will i say uh downside protection or whatsoever lah, because it's a loan contract and uh it depends on what is being stipulated in the loan contract so the best way to do this is of course um exercise this thing lah, which is uh don't put all your money into one basket all right, you may actually spread out your capital across different stocks or different securities. 
so that uh, if one got bombed, then you don't get if one don't if one of these stocks got bombed, then it doesn't hurt your portfolio that much. Lah. That's what I'm saying. Mm, okay. Uh, so the next question is can the bond holder request for capital back in any year in the case of perpetual bond? Well, actually the first thing is the reason why it says perpetual bond, right? It's simply because they want your you want they want your capital like hold so your capital like forever. La. So can't take back the money. La. Uh so no. Can't la. take back the principal. Uh, 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 that's why make sure you read what is what's the underlying contract before you actually get into it. Mm -hmm. The next question is how what is the NA net asset value of a bond? And what affects it? Net asset value of a bond. Okay. It, uh, it actually a bond, right? Is is a lending thing. So lending thing means there's credit, all right. So when we talk about bond, we want to talk about the credit worthiness of the issuer, all right. Let's say Shane is the lender, I'm the borrower, I'm the company. So before Shane actually gives me his money, he wants to know whether I'm a credit, whether I'm I'm trustworthy or not, lah, in terms of my credit, okay. So if let's say I am deemed to be very good, very trustworthy, all right. My credit score is very nice. Then of course, uh, people are more than happy to lend money to me, lah. All right, and that is the thing that affects uh, a bond, lah. But if let's say my credit my credit score is not so good, then of course, Shane may not may be reluctant to actually give me the money. Or if he is willing to help me out, if he is willing to give me his capital to me, he may ask for a higher return because he may say, "Hey, Ian." Your credit score not so nice, ah. I don't think there will be anyone apart from me who will be lending money to you. So with that, right? But then I lend money to you because I support you. But then I support you, I must get better returns. So for me, I'm a bit desperate. I say, okay lah. I think Shane is the only guy in the whole wide world that will give me the money. So therefore, I will increase his interest income. So instead of a conventional of five percent. Maybe I will up my interest income to let's say seven or eight percent, so that uh, I can actually compensate uh, Shane for taking a risk, taking a chance in me. Mm. So what affects a bond is actually the credit worthiness of the issuer. Mm. Mm. Okay. So how do we select good bond to invest? That is the next question. Credit with dinosaur. <laughs> credit as what you say, uh, but uh, yeah, but usually all these credit high credit rating like triple A bonds or for those bonds that are very good rating, uh, the yield is not so high, lah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So high yield bonds are the one that the risk is a bit higher. <laughs> so it all depends on your 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 risk appetite, lah. Okay, if you can take a bit more risk, you can go for high yield bonds. If you are more conservative, then go for investment grade bonds. You can mix and play, yeah. depending yeah. on your preference. Uh. But, but, yeah, but anyway, um, today we let's, let's focus on the exchange traded bonds, okay? okay. <laughs> because under Malaysia. Okay, so generally speaking, next question is Is there a particular type of bond that delivers the highest returns? This is assuming risk and fact, other factors remain equal across different bond types. Junk bond. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, okay, okay, obviously. It's part partially joking, but it's also partially truth. The ones that give the highest returns are usually the ones that people don't want to actually lend money to, right? Mm. So that's why mm. that's where your junk your junk bond comes in, mm. lah. Why is it called junk bond? Because people treat the bond like junk, lah. Because people don't want to lend money into it. So that's why it's called junk bond. Lah. Yeah, I remember when when the country uh Greece. Went bankrupt several mm -hmm. years back. I uh, read that their bond yield is at sixteen percent a year. Mm. So this is a kind of rate that a country a sovereign bond can fetch. Mm. Okay, actually I don't know what is the one NDB bond yields right now. <laughs> actually, it's like of course you can look at it from a country's perspective. Uh -huh. uh, like say for example Germany. All right, Germany mm -hmm. obviously the bond rate. The bond yield is going to be super low because their credit rating is super strong. Mm -hmm. All right. Of course, Singapore is going to have very good uh, credit rating. 
and Germany and the US. Of course, these countries, while well, their credit rating is so strong mm -hmm. because their financial records are much better. La. I'm not too sure about US, la, but let's say Germany, I have more faith in them. La. So, okay, let's say they are pretty good. So, of course, the bond yields will be obviously lower la, because their credit rating is actually pretty good. But if you are talking about other countries, let's hope Malaysia holds up. La. If Malaysia holds up, then maybe our bond yield is not too high. La. Mm. Oh, right? <laughs> mm. But if let's say something happened to uh, our country's finances, then of course uh, that's not so good to our credit rating. Then of course people will want higher mm. returns for their money mm. before lending the money to us. Mm. Okay. So the next question is, is there any bond ETF in Malaysia? Mm -hmm. Bond ETF, there's only one mm. that I know of. Mm. All right, there's only one. I do not, it start, the, the name starts with an A. It's ABF something. Ah. Mm. All right, yeah, there, there, there is, there is. Okay, let's go and find out, Bursa, Malaysia. Okay, mm. so the next question is, how can one sell a bond before it matures through Busan Malaysia? Just go to your online trading account and uh, just make the trade. All right. Like for example, right now you can buy. Okay. If you see, let's say you go back, right? So right now it's uh this is a 10 years to cook. So you can actually buy it right now. Let's say the price is about $100.70 or $100.00. Uh, 60 cents then of course you can go to the market straight away open your stock trading account and you can make the purchase online and then uh, you will own a sukuk mm. and then if you want to dispose it then you will dispose it and uh, get back your capital mm. yeah mm -hmm. so it, this is already on the secondary market we yeah. can trade bond on the secondary market correct yeah so next is uh, can Exchange traded bonds and suku holder attend AGM. <laughs> uh, I don't think so, lah. I, I I'm not too sure whether they have AGMs or not. Um, that is actually a little bit beyond my knowledge, lah. All right. No, okay. But if let's say it's a bond, then of course there's no AGM for you to attend, lah. Okay. Uh, because I, I personally have not invested in any ETBS before, so I got no experience as well. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh -huh. So do I. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, the next question is: Is there an X date for bond stock for interest entitlement similar like dividend entitlement for a stock? That one, I believe yes. That one, yes. You can go to Bursa Malaysia website and they will tell you when exactly they're gonna they are gonna credit the the interest or the profit rate to you. All right. They will give you a lot. They they will give you some information like, like for example how much they are doing. How much they are going to declare, when exactly is their payment date, and stuff like that. So you just need to go to Bursa Malaysia. What you can do is this. You, let's say, for example, let's try out this. If you if you are watching this webinar right now, let's say you can you can go to Bursa Malaysia website, all right? And then at the stock code, at that part, right, you just type in 0400GA, all right? That's the stock code for Dana Infra National Berhad, uh, kind of uh, ETBS. You click onto that, you click onto company announcement, and I'm sure you can actually get all this information very handy. Mm, so okay. the answer is yes. Yeah. So the next question is, if the bondholder sells it before the X date or maturity date, will he or she still get any interest upon the bond maturity date? Yes. All right. So that's why when it comes to bonds, right, uh, it's not like FD whereby, let's say you have a one-year FD, you hold it for nine months and then, yeah, I need the money. I need to cash it out. Then you lose the interest. That's FD. But for bonds, it's a bit different. That's why they have this. They have two types. For bonds, they have two types of pricing: the clean price, the clean price, and as well as the dirty price. So what do I mean? Okay. For example. Okay. I purposely make this slide right close, right at the dot at 2020. All right, so if you want to be super exact, let's say the the bond is actually listed at uh, on the 8th of February 2013. So this should actually represent the period whereby you bought it at 8 
February 2020. But right now, as we speak, we are now at uh, November. November 14, 2019. Okay, so it is still three months away, right? So I, I believe you're going to get a little bit more than when it comes to if, if it's let's say, let's say actual bonds, uh, all right, you're going to get the accrued interest or at least you are gonna you're gonna pay a price to compensate the bond the existing bond holders that means let's say i'm the buyer he's the interested seller he has already hold the bond for quite some time already he won't lose his interest in fact when i buy the bond i have to buy and uh, pay your interest so that you don't lose the three months mm. all right so there's such a thing called clean pricing and dirty pricing for bonds. Mm -hmm. Now for this example, uh, what is the minimum amount of purchase uh, 0400 GA? Uh? Like the quote is, the quoted price now is 160 cent. Is it one lot 100 times 100, which means 10,000 and 60 ringgit? Uh, no, you see like a uh, lot. Okay, so the, the price is now 100 dollars and 60 cents minimum lot is 10 lots so one time i buy i need to buy 10 lots huh? um, so, so times ten, 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 not times 100 huh? no so it's like 1000 ringgit lah, just mm -hmm. to start investing mm -hmm. okay can we request to get an annual report from the bond issuer uh you can check the out tbs issuer lah, in, uh, what what, he, what the question means mm -hmm. usually they would <laughs> You, you can try, but it's not actually given on the Sun Malaysia uh, website. Mm -hmm. Do the bond issuer need to have something guaranteed or mortgage to issue a bond? Bond issuer. Mm. Okay, first they must actually, like for example, for a sukuk, they need, all right, the sukuk, they need to actually, um, they need to define the purpose and the underlying asset of the project. So for sukuk, yes. You need that. Mm, okay. For bonds, it depends on what is the purpose and how they structure the bond. Sometimes they may issue bonds, right? Not for any sort of projects or what. It's just they want to. They can actually, let's say for example, I'm the company. I want to issue bonds to Shane. Maybe because I want I want the capital and I want to put it in the bank account. Mm. All right, just to hold it for a reserve or something like that. Mm. Then there's no underlying asset or no underlying uh, collateral so to speak. Mm -hmm. So in that case, you don't need, but for sukuk, you need to show something mm -hmm. because what you are, what the sukuk buyers are actually getting into is they are funding a certain company or they are funding a certain project. So you need to actually show a certain kind of uh, asset because mm -hmm. what sukuk people are buying is actually the asset. Mm -hmm. Okay. The next question is, what are the risks involved in investing in bonds? Um, number one, if you get a, because this is lending one. So when you lend money, when you lend people money, of course, some people may not pay back. That is the risk. Mm -hmm. So which means to say that uh, there could be possibilities of uh, loan defaults. Mm -hmm. All right. So when that happens, then that is very bad for the bond. Mm -hmm. All right. Because, uh, it, lo it loses creditworthiness, which means to say bonds and creditworthiness are, uh, they are, they are two words intertwined. All right, bond value is dependent on creditworthiness. If the bond loses its creditworthiness, then of course it will be very bad for the yeah, bond because the company have to service more in terms of interest. Mm. Mm. It's just like how people go. People and bank like that, lah, all right? If people are credit worthy, then of course, maybe the bank will love you lah, because they want you as their customer because you're credit worthy. Ma. If let's say the bank sees your credit profile and say, oh, you, your, your, your credit score like that one, then then of course, uh, the bank doesn't want you to be your customer, all right? Because you are not deemed to be credit worthy enough for them to lend money to you. They don't trust you enough to that. They don't trust you enough in terms of repaying the loan. On time and stuff like that then of course they will lah. okay so what could be the factors that cause the bond price to be lower than the power value bond price to be lower than the power value yeah. like the issue price uh. 
it could be possibly the bond may lose a little bit of creditworthiness. So maybe that's why the bond price may be a bit uh, lower or they can be a little bit depressed. Mm -hmm. All right. So that may actually causes, uh, uh, that could be the first reason why the bond price may be a bit low. The second reason, it can be nothing to do with bonds. You see, like, for example, bonds, are, uh, it's all willing buyer, willing seller, right? So let's say in a good market, all right, um, you have more investors lah, who are who are actually more, uh, how would I say? They are more risk taking. Uh, they are more aggressive. So mm. they instead of bonds, they want to go for a risky asset. That's why they sell down their bonds, holdings to rebalance into a more equity heavy portfolio. Something like that. Mm. Then yeah. that causes the bond price so to that, down. Yeah, because what, whatever is traded on the exchange, is subject to the forces in the market, the Correct. supply and demand. So when you see that the the list the, the the current traded price lowered than the par value, it means that the uh, the yield will go higher, mm -hmm. and it means that people are now willing to take more risk mm -hmm. to go to a higher risk assets. Yes, exactly. Okay. So the next question is. Um, Why are the bond investment less attractive to retail investor in Malaysia? Well, it depends. Number one, there are more shares listed on the stock exchange over bonds. That's number one. All right. Number two, you see there are a lot of people participating in the stock market. They may not be investors. There are many different types of people who are involved in buying and selling shares in the stock market. Not all of them are investors. So that's why the subject of investing is so confusing. All right, because you have different types of people, different with different types of objectives and personalities involved in the buying and selling of shares in the stock exchange. All right. So for instance, we have investors number one. Okay. Investors are people who actually they are pretty much conservative. All right, so they are conservative people who just want to buy into good companies and and make sure that the good company shares are are offered at a discount and they just want to enjoy some some good form of recurring dividend income. Something people like me lah, for example, mm. dividend investor is actually one type of investor. Mm. But there are also other people who actually who like something more exciting. All right, they are in to try it out. They mm. do not have a specific plan or specific. They do not have an investment plan. They do not know what they are doing. So they just come in with money and they just want to try their luck. Mm. So basically, these are people who uh, who believe that they may they can double or nothing their money in the stock market and uh, they can go in at one dollar, come out with two dollars at the shortest possible amount of time. It's so exciting, so they go in. There are also people like that in the stock market, and of course, there are traders in the stock market who uses sophisticated advanced trading tools charting tools to actually time and time their market where their mentality will be very different from how investors would uh, would adopt when it comes to buying and selling shares. So you have different people with different backgrounds, with different amount of capitals, with different personalities and as well as different characteristics in the stock market. So therefore, um, that's why maybe um, share market or the stock market, right? may cater to all these people better, much, so much better than the bond market. Lah. Mm. So maybe that's why more people are into shares than bonds. Lah. Mm. Yeah. All right. So the next question is, what is your view on buying bonds from the some other platforms such as uh, fundsupermarket.com? Is liquidity better than the exchange traded bonds and supermarket? More or less the same, I suppose. Okay. So it depends what what gives you the better deal, lah. All right, you can, of course, uh, because Pusat Malaysia we have four, all right. Of course, if you go to I, um, you go to Fund Superman, obviously you are gonna have a lot more choices, lah. All right, you just go to two websites and you compare, lah. So the the whole idea is that um, anything that gives you the better better deal, right, you can just go for it directly, lah. Mm. Mm. Okay, is there any correlation between the Malaysian equity market and the Malaysian bond market. Mm. Correlation. Mm. All right. Do I you mean, study into such depth? Of course. 
of course not lah. But then what I know is this lah. Let's say for example, if I'm a company, yeah. Huh? Let's say I'm the company, okay. And uh, if you want to logic it this way, right? All right. I'm the company. I'm trying to invest in the business. I'm actually running a business, and uh, and I will get a profit, right? So let's say for example. Uh, of course, the lesser interest rate I pay to people, to my borrowers, let's say people like Shane, the more profits I'm going to generate. So if Shane is getting a fixed interest income, all right, and my profits go up, of course, uh, my share price will also go up. Lah, all right. But if let's say Shane or any other borrowers are getting more interest income from me and I get lesser profits, then of course, uh, the bond market will do much better than the share market. Lah. All right, so that's my general understanding, my general logic. Lah. Maybe Shane, you can actually add to this particular question. What do you think? Lah? <laughs> <laughs> okay, then let's go to the next question. Yes. Is there any market maker for the exchange traded bond and so could avoid liquidity issue? Market, market maker. I thought Bersan Malaysia is the market maker, right? Uh, or... No, 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 Bersan Malaysia no. is the platform. Platform. This one to provide the provide a place for the issuer to, to issue the ETPS on the stock exchange. You know, so yeah. so far no comments on this issue. Lah. Okay, yeah, no idea. Lah, no huh? idea. Lah. Yeah, okay. I also have no idea. <laughs> okay. I never bought any ETPS before because uh, I'm more like a stock guy, I'm not a bond guy. Okay? Okay, okay. But you're more conservative, so I don't know whether you bought before or not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, for the bond listed on Bursa Malaysia, after the interest X date, will the bond price be adjusted? Like what happened uh, to dividend? Uh, <laughs> no, uh, slightly. Uh, in the case of Dana, you found not much. Uh. That's why you can see the stock price also doesn't go anywhere. Uh, so. <laughs> okay. It's there to give you fixed periodic profits mm. every six months once. Mm. Uh. Mm, okay. With, uh, so what is the difference between a bond and the P2P financing? Oh, that's a good question. Okay. Now, P2P financing, all right, and uh, bond, uh, number one, of course, the, the, the return is actually a bit different. Uh, all right, that's number one. Of course, people are expecting to get more from P2P financing. So if you're into that kind of uh, returns, then of course, P2P will be preferred over bonds. That's number one. Number two, when it comes to bonds, right? Usually, people who who issue bonds are these are actually bigger companies, bigger companies or government, all right. So, which means to say, if you are if you want to actually uh, get bonds or sukuk from bigger companies or more established companies or even the government, right? Then you may actually go into ETBS, all right. Because people who actually go into B two P financing, they are all small and medium enterprises, huh? All right. The reason why they go into P two P is simply because if they want to go through bank loan, uh, they have a lot of paperwork to fill out, and they have a lot of uh, rules and restrictions that the bank may impose. The bank may impose uh, when it comes to uh, financing. All right. When it when it comes to financing for the uh, SMEs. All right. But if they go through P two P, then maybe SMEs uh, have a much better, easier time to actually get financing. Mm. All right. Now the third one is when it comes to default lah. So if a so if let's say I'm the issuer, I'm the bond, and then I default, then of course maybe as a bondholder you get back something lah. You can recover something. But when it comes to P 2 P, when let's say the company default or something like that, then a bit hard for you to actually um, get back anything lah from from your uh, investment. Mm. That's why if you want to go into P 2 P, uh. Of course, this one I have a friend. Actually, we have a mutual friend who actually went into P2P. We have a mutual friend. Yes, of course, our our Taiko KC la. So he went into P2P. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he so if so it's actually based on his experience la. Okay. Because what he did was P2P, right? He put in let's say he put in let's say ten thousand dollars, and then he diversify ma. Everyone he every single lender, every single SME, he put one thousand dollars. Okay, so we have 10 P2P, lend, TP, P2P lenders, P2P borrowers, sorry, 10 companies, these are borrowers, and he's the financier. 
every single one, let's say, let, every single one of them, let's say they are making 10% in interest rate. So the first one, okay, they pay back the $1,000 and you pay the 10% interest rate. So you get back 100 and, uh, 1,100. 1, 1, the second one did the same. The third one did the same. For the first nine borrowers, everyone pays him back uh, the 10% interest. So you get back nine, nine, uh, 9,900. The last one, after paying for, let's say, two months, let's say the financing is for one year, after paying for two months, the company actually defaulted. And the two months, let's say you get back 170 bucks. Okay, so it's 9,900 plus 170, which is about $10,000. And then the amount defaulted is actually principal and interest default. You lose everything. So you can have one default that wipes out your... Yeah, yeah. But, but essentially, uh, Frank Casey still makes money. La. Don't lose money, just don't make as much. La. Yes. Just, he takes back 10,000 plus. La. So the strategy is don't do, don't go with too much capital in for one SMB. That's why a lot of people they when they when they do P two P right, uh, they only go like a few hundred dollars per company. But mm -hmm. of course that is just uh outside the topic. Mm -hmm. So what I mean to say is that if you want better, more uh, let's say the quality of the borrowers uh, the credit worthiness of the borrowers is much stronger. Mm -hmm. Then just go with ETBS. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. The next question is. Which one uh, has more priority when it comes to liquidation? Is it bond or sukut? <laughs> you don't know, is it? I have no idea. Okay. But based on I have no idea. But either. based on sukut, uh, but based on sukut, uh, all right. Because this ETBS, like this sukut is from Dana Infra, uh, so it's government, right? Uh -huh. Can government go default? Like Malaysia went. Let's hope that they won't happen, uh, Okay. Next question is: Is the bond value ETBS value? affected by the bull and bear trend market force less likely less likely than stocks mm. okay okay let me see can so the, the next question is can we subscribe to the bond like we subscribe to the ipo share possible possible if it happens mm. Okay, that means how, 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 but of course on ETBS, you can't uh, because all these are uh, exchange traders, so you have to trade on the stock exchange. You want to subscribe to the bond, I think you got to go to the primary market, like subscribe for the banks. Uh. Mm. Okay. All right, I think we have done enough in the, all the technical terms. Okay, mm -hmm. I hope that you are not uh, bought by all the technical terms that we covered and hope that you can get as much as you can uh, from this uh uh etbs webinar yes. so now let's talk about when is our next webinar next webinar will happen on the 3rd of december this is the last uh, beginner webinar mm -hmm. for the year of 2019 so we are going to do how to invest rationally in an irrational market so the registration link is already shared on our chat group Please go to click immediately if you want to uh, learn from our speaker, uh, Pauline Yong, on how to invest rationally in an irrational market. Mm. All right. So, uh, yeah, with that, thank you so much, Ian, for spending your time with us this evening to talk about ETPS. I know that it is uh, not an easy topic because that's not, uh, not about share, but it's about a more technical debt instrument, which is bond, which is a fixed income uh, security to us. Yeah, thank you so mm. much again, uh, yeah. Shane, for inviting me to do this uh, particular webinar. I have actually learned a lot from this particular session when I'm preparing this thing. Oh, now. okay, cool. So, yeah. Um, yeah, thanks for the chance to actually share what I have, know what I have gathered and what I've known about this ETBS. And it's always a pleasure to be here. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in tonight. Uh, this webinar is brought to you by Bursa Malaysia and managed by Earth Life Champ. All right, see you again next uh next time all right next month in december all right bye 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 bye